the chapter is nutritional component of care right go second page this said nutrition nutrition first of all if just think about our daily life what we do we eat chicken legs right we eat rice we eat vegetables so this is everybody know that we eat rice we eat chicken legs we eat the fruits but you are going to be special in the society you are going to get your rn license in united states so you have to know something better what general people knows right so i said we eat rice but basically rice is the carbohydrate rice is a carbohydrate right so carbohydrate so keep it mind carbohydrate we eat and carbohydrate the major source of energy the carbohydrate is the major source of energy right and the example of carbohydrate like rice gains nut or some fruits right carbohydrate so here the nutritional values of carbohydrate is a four calorie per gram same as the protein protein nutritional value for protein same for calories per gram but fat nine calories per gram so i said like example the carbohydrate are the source of energy and provide nine calories per gram what about the protein what about the pro protein protein are same full four calories per gram what about the fat fat is nine calories per gram right this is the i mean normal values if you eat one gram carbohydrate we get four calories if you get four gram kilo, uh, carbohydrate protein get four calories if you eat or take one gram fat we will get nine kilo calories or nine calories right so as an example some time board some time board and clicks are in board exam question and we are going to discuss about the question from evolve today but before to say example a client as a 24 hour i said a client supposed to eat 24 hours total intake of 200 gram carbohydrate 100 gram protein and 50 gram total i mean fat how much calorie they intake the question look like this i just i want to recap it so already we know from one gram we has to get this amount right this amount four four nine so one gram fat give us nine calories or nine kilocalories and four grams give us uh i mean protein give kilocalories nine gram give i mean this is give nine kilocalories and this is give uh kilocalories it is good to know so this is the amount but i said sometimes board asks if a client had a 
24 hour total intake 200 gram carbohydrate 200 gram i said 100 gram protein and 50 gram fat how much total calorie intake just we have to multiply total number by four by four or plus nine right so uh, here i'm just taking a little bit time for better understanding then we will run faster i said if a client take 200 gram carbohydrate carbohydrate then 100 gram uh, 100 gram protein and 50 gram fat so how much total calorie he take total calorie uh, we know like as an example the carbohydrate one gram equal to four kilocalorie so 200 gram just four multiply 200 protein is 100 so four multiply by 100 and nine calorie fat so 50 gram fat 50 multiply by nine so if you make summary summarized is the total amount a person could take so carbohydrate promote the normal metabolism right provide metabolism also spare protein and enhance the lower gastrointestinal function major food source of carbohydrate intake is milk then rice some grains fruits and vegetables and inadequate carbohydrate inadequate i said inadequate carbohydrate intake affect the metabolism right my friend if you ask me what is metabolism is the example metabolism is a process metabolism is a process where food particles break down and produce energy as a atp like you are sitting in front of computer but if i ask before sit the computer what you did you say i got up from the sleep i brush my teeth i meet make my some breakfast then i clean my house i open my laptop everything organized and i sit and i'm listening so you see how many things you did you open the laptop you are sitting you clean your house you make some breakfast you wake up do some exercise so all of things you done because you have the energy this energy coming by the process of metabolism but what are the raw materials for the metabolism protein what are the raw material of, of this energy chicken legs chicken legs right or some beans or some rice so here i said this is the process of metabolism where food particles break down now continuation second one they said fat fat right so fat provide the concentrate source and store form of energy so basically you imagine like fat most of the times so we, we thought fat is so bad fat is not good fat is kill my heart but you can you think a hey, girls do not any kind of fat in the body she is too thin you do not find her on the bed she is too thin how look like not good right not a uh, appealness of attraction so fat 
give us uh, not only looking beautiful, the fat is important component and they can store the energy in the body. When body need, they can release the fat, they can release the energy. And also fat is the help to help to lose the heat from the body. So the student who came from North Pole, like um, Chicago, New York, right? Or Wisconsin. So this is too cold, Indiana. So I said, it is too cold. So if anybody in that area, they do not have any fat, they die. Fat protect the heat loss. They protect heat loss and also they can work as an insulation. They are the source of energy. The carif, sometimes the fat, not sometimes, all the time, fat carry the fat soluble vitamin. Without fat, fat soluble vitamin does not work. So what is fat? soluble vitamin so fat soluble vitamin are vitamin a vitamin d vitamin e and vitamin k a d e k short little add ek, right so this is the fat soluble vitamin included vitamin a vitamin d vitamin e vitamin k K is an important factor of coagulation of blood, right? So the source of fat are egg yolk, liver, then some butter, cheese, or margin, uh, margarine, right? So here fat, protect the internal organ, maintain the body temperature. Fat enhance the absorption of fat soluble vitamin. This is the fat soluble vitamin. Inadequate intake of essential fatty acid. You see one of the term essential. What our body must need. Our body must need. So essential fat, essential fat. So our body do not need too much, not too much. Need you very trace, very small amount, but you need it. Fatty acid lead to the clinical manifestation, sensitivity of cold, skin uh, infection or lesion, or increase the risks of infection. Also. A menoria, a menoria. So I always say my regular student, anything started by A or R, this is absin. A for amenorrhea, A for absin. If a female menstruation is absin, a menoria. So fat is, it is not that fat is very bad for heart. But fat also a, a lot of good, um, I mean, participation in the body, right? But keep in mind, we have to take limited amount of fat because the disease, I mean, the person who or the client sometimes have cardiovascular problem or cardiac disease, it is not too good to tell them too much fat. So diet high in the fat can lead to obesity. And obesity is the most number one cause of death in the United States. Increase the risk of carbohydrate disease and some type of cancer as well. So we will eat fat, but not too much. Too much is not good, right, my friend? Too much is not good. Too much good or too much bad, both are bad. 
So now go for protein. So protein here, another component, yeah, like protein is the amino acid, the easy component. So again, I said, like you, we are eating chicken legs again, but we eat chicken legs, but chicken legs directly do not go to our blood. We eat, we chewing, break down, then they go digestion in the system. When go in the digestion, they break down in small component. And the finally, the ending portion of the protein is the amino acid. Amino acid, right? So protein is the last ending part of Pro, I mean, amino acid, the lasting part of protein. So protein or amino acid needed for the body. They are very important component for tissue building. Tissue building, I said, right? So we found the protein in meat, chicken, beans, right or tofu this is the good source of protein so amino acid is the make of the protein and so my friend what we learn from here i said protein is the complex component when protein break down then amino acid come amino acid the smallest component of protein so if the protein is the mother, the amino acid is the children, right? Again, something is very important. Very important, I said. Support you, your muscle, your hair, your skin, your bones, your blood. Everything is a protein, right? Everything is a protein. And protein is a chain of amino acid. Amino acid is the smallest component of protein. So from today, if you get any time amino acid, means it is protein, right? So which make up the protein? Also, protein make, uh, okay, amino acid make the protein. And uh, critical to all aspects of the growth and development of body tissue. So I already said the protein or amino acids needed for tissue building, tissue building, tissue building. Protein build and repair the body tissue, regulate the fluid, maintain acid base balance. So, you know, we have a one big chapter we will talk acid and base acid and base so protein is an important player to maintain acid base balance and produce antibody so you know when in a bacteria attack and body can produce antibody and this antibody is a type of protein and provide the energy, they also provide energy. I said, as I, but I said, four kilocalorie per gram and produce energy and hormones. So our body can produce different kind of hormone, hormone, I said, like, uh, I mean, gastrin, then amino acid, I mean, um, uh, Amylase, lipase, all are protein. Insulin is a protein, right? So essential amino acid are require the diet because of body cannot maintain them. So essential amino acid. So there are two ND, two ND amino acid. They are called essential because body does not produce this 20 amino acid so we have to take from the uh, from 
the food from the food we have to take from food right so okay so essential amino acid require in the diet because the body cannot maintain them and also the complete protein complete the protein contain all essential amino acid or incomplete protein like some of essential fatty acid inadequate protein intake can cause protein energy malnutrition or require the wasting the fat and muscle tissue so i said if anybody is deficiency of protein inadequate protein intake can cause protein energy malnutrition like kwashiorkor or marasmus or severe wasting of the fat and muscle tissue so i'm going to show you a picture okay so i said the malnutrition when deficiency of amino acid anybody can produce this type of problem can you see the picture here showing the protein energy malnutrition this baby called marasmus and this pardon and this body in picture is showing the kwashiorkor the we both, don't see the picture we don't see the picture okay so now you can see so here the picture can you see right now yes okay so yes i, I said if anybody has a deficiency of protein the baby may be develop marasmus or kwashiorkor right so protein i said both patient has a protein deficiency but why marasmus and kwashiorkor in marasmus or kwashiorkor somebody take the protein the quality of the protein is okay but the amount or quantity is not enough another person maybe the amount of the protein or quantity of the protein is okay but not qualityful these are two very different i said maybe i have to take that um, 200 gram protein every day but i'm taking the 200 milligram or gram protein but this is not a quality it is does not contain all, all amino acid another patient they has to take 200 gram protein but and the protein is good quality but they do not get 200 maybe take 100 right so sometimes the quality deficiency or sometimes quantity deficiency i'm saying again is a way sometimes the amount is not enough what body need or sometimes amount is okay but this is not the good quality means the food does not contain all essential amino acid and here in the powerpoint i'm showing this powerpoint this is essential amino acid so body need this essential 20 amino acid so as a as a because we are rn or we are um, any healthcare provider what we has to know for board exam okay for board exam i said very important my friend Berry means super duper important what i'm going to talk right now like you know the barn b u r n barn patient or any kind of wound 
any kind of wound or burn or pregnancy, pregnant mother, they need more protein. And some patient like kidney problem, liver problem, they have to take less amount of protein. So what I am talking or what are the in, uh, important information I'm talking, I'm just writing here. I said, if any patient or if any clients, clients means patient, has a BE or burns or wounds, right? Or I said the pregnant mother, preg pregnant mother, right? Or if anybody has a some kind of disease like like Addison disease, like Addison. A double D I S Addison disease, or even cystic fibrosis, cystic fibrosis, right? The client who have the burn or wound or pregnant mother Addison disease or cystic fibrosis, they need more protein or they need increase the protein intake. Protein intake. On the other hand, if anybody has a kidney problem or kidney disease, right? Anybody has a kidney disease or liver disease, or I say the liver disease, disease, they need less protein. They need decrease the protein in their diet, right? So they need less protein. So this is the information we need for board exam. Sometimes board exam asks, in case of acute cranial failure, in case of acute kidney failure, what food you have to restrict it for the patient? Protein. If the patient has a liver cirrhosis, what we have to need to reduce? It is protein. On the other hand, if anybody has a burn or wound or pregnant mother they has to take more protein right they has to take in case of addition or cystic fibrosis they need more protein then go next here here i said the other one is Nutri, I mean the vitamin. Vitamin is a very important for the body, right? So vitamin one is, I mean, um, okay. This PowerPoint on base of our textbooks it is Sender um, and Clex RN books we followed. So we try to cover all of the information here. So nutrition, one is called, I mean, here the vitamin. So vitamin is very necessary or important component for normal cellular function, right? Or normal cellular function of the body. So if anybody has a deficiency of particular vitamin, they have a develop some neurological or some bodily problem. As an example, I said, as an example, it is it's coming like B, B, vitamin B1. If anybody has a deficiency of B1, they can develop the neurological problem. 
if anybody has a deficiency of vitamin C, they can develop or they can cause a scurvy. Scurvy, I said. If anybody has a vitamin K deficiency, they can develop the clotting problem, right? So here we are going to talk about this. Vitamin uh, facilitate metabolism of the protein, fat, and carbohydrate. Like here, my friend, you are here who listening me, and I am here who are talking. You listen, I talk. You are preparing yourself for NCLEX board. I am here as an instructor. But is it possible only you and me here, everything is done? No. We are using some social media like, like Zoom. So because of Zoom, we are connecting, right? So you, I am here as instructor, you are the student, but who bring up everybody in the same pace? Our CEO, Mr. Voltier, I'm talking about he collect you, he collect me, he opened the school, he have a license for the school, and everybody's there. You see, it is not, in, I mean, you are here, I am here, we are sitting, talking, but it is not easy matter, right? So, whatever we eat and food undergo the metabolism or metabolic process and produce the energy but sometimes we need some important component they can put them together and the process is ongoing on so without vitamin no chemical reaction process to go forward if there are no chemical reaction, no ATP produce, ATP. If no ATP produce, then no energy, and we will do not do any access, any 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 daily living work, and finally patient die. So the vitamin uh, facilitated the metabolism of protein, metabolism of fat, and metabolism of carbohydrate. So they act as a catalyst or metabolism. So vitamin promote the life or growth process and maintain the regular body function. Fat-soluble vitamin A, D, E, K can be stored in the body, and so an excess can cause toxicity. So always I said, good is good, but not too good is good, right? So if if you have take a vitamin as a limited amount, this is good, but if you take too much. It is causes toxicity. The B vitamin and vitamin C are water soluble. So B or B complex vitamin and vitamin C are water soluble. If you ask me what does it mean? Mean vitamin B and C dissolve in the water. Vitamin A, D, E, and K, they can dissolve in fat. So the measure stage of lifespan with specific uh, nutritional needs are pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, adolescence. Adult and older adult may experience the physiological aging change, which influence individual nutritional need. So pregnancy, 
lactation, infant, childhood, or a relations, they need more amount of protein because the childhood adolescence this is the growing stage pregnancy mother need food baby as well lactation mother is giving the food to the baby mother need more intake so here also some minerals minerals and electrolyte so not only the protein fat or carbohydrate we need some minerals as well right so here minerals are the component of hormone or cell tissue or bones minerals act as a catalyst or chemical reaction or enhance to the cell of function also almost all food contains some form of minerals minerals may be electrolyte what is electrolyte sodium potassium calcium magnesium like this electrolyte play a major role in osmolality and body water regulation acid base balance also always check the client ability to eat and swallow or promote the in adequate in eating as much possible so i said we are aren't right so when we work in rehab center or long care or dead or terminal uh, care the patient is too old or their disease sometimes the patient does not eat well they does not take enough fluid so it is our profession we have to be care concerned about our patient if we see somebody are malnourished right mal uh, uh, vitamin so we has to check it and then we have to encourage them to take the enough amount of vitamins and minerals basically the person who are elderly their absorption abilities also go down right so it is very important the monitoring the patient right this status of their uh, body so here and this is the standard book okay the page number is 125 or 24 so they are talking about the my plate so you see that my plate is covered by protein gain most carbohydrate some fruits some vegetables and also dairy product or dairy product so we are talking about the portion of food contained in our plate or what we have to eat every day or make a balanced diet so my plate provide a description of a balanced diet right nutritionist or the person who specialized to nutrition they can give a uh, guideline what amount we have to follow maybe it is okay with you or me but keep in mind the person who is a kidney failure liver failure they need a proper guideline to follow or make a balanced diet what are the important component in the guideline first of all avoid the eating oversize 
right? Not any kind of protein is not too much. Carbohydrate is not too much. Also, full half of the plate with fruits and vegetables. So in the picture we saw, 50% or more than this is covered by a vegetable. So if I said in this picture, 50% of the plate covered by vegetables and fruits, right? And proportion of carbohydrate and protein. So this is the uh, called the nutritional plate or my plate we provide. Also vary the type of vegetables or fruits uh, we eat, right? And also they said the ensure that food from dairy groups and contain the my plate, what are the other guidelines? Drink milk that is fat free or low fat. Eat protein food and also select the fresh fruits over the frozen or cane. So if the uh, fresh fruit is better than frozen food, fresh fruit better to cane food because canned food contains so much sodium and too much sodium is not good for the body. Also, we have to drink enough water and we have to drink rather than the liquid we can buy from the shop that is full of sugar. Always consider the client culture, spirituality, personal choice. If some religion are not allowed to drink alcohol, so if you do not show the respect to your client, and definitely this is not a fear, it is not allowed in our profession. We have to respect to the patient regardless of their language, their religion, their race, right? So it is, um, we have to be. So this is uh, now go for a therapeutic diet. So what is therapy? Right now I am in the evolve phase. I'm just choosing the study button, content area, and fundamental of skill. Out of them, the nutrition, right? In the nutrition, um, just go one question. So the nurse is teaching a client who has iron deficiency anemia. Anemia about the food should, uh, about the food she should include in the diet. The nurse determined that the client understanding the dietary modification if which item are select from the menu. So I want to give you a few minutes to think about this question and let me, you have to answer me. Then I go and further discussion because this is the therapeutic diet. Then I go and restart it again. Why? Because my friend, it is very important. I respect your opinion, but before to go, answer. Very important. It is USA. Okay. The in US education system, you have to be practice the practice question. Why? Because if you do not know to understand the examiner mind, then you have to choose the answer like this. Okay, they say a patient has a problem of iron deficiency anemia as a RN, as a doctor, as a healthcare provider, we give them to take iron containing food, but keep it mind, 
iron containing food when you give them you have to educate your patient iron containing food i know this is the some uh, green fruits or some leafy vegetable contain some vitamin k or a little bit iron too but when you give them the when a patient need the iron containing food the iron containing food has to take with some precaution right so i'm going through uh, you said four submit it right so here the iron containing food so the nurse determined that the client understand the dietary modification which item so they want to know if patient has a deficiency of iron they has to take some food which is contain the iron but also it is important if the patient is is below areas right they has to take the iron with a straw we have to educate them also because the iron contain the permanent stain on their teeth so what their explanation dark green vegetables are the good source of iron or organ are the good source of vitamin c which in enhance the iron absorption this is the information we also learn so keep it mind when you go through the rationale you have to make a note i said here vitamin c help to absorption of iron sometimes the question come which vitamin help to absorption of iron vitamin c right so it is the another note we have to learn so when you go to the rationale always try to learn some more information all other options are not good source that are high in iron and vitamin c they contain this one iron and vitamin c most of all you answer this question it is very good sign so now we are going to talk about the uh, powerpoint again okay so you have to practice the question from there now we are going therapeutic diet easy way the understanding of therapeutic diet the in what disease condition what kind of food we need like few minutes ago you answer me a patient if a iron deficiency anemia you have to give them the food contain the iron and vitamin c help to absorption of iron this is therapeutic diet for iron deficiency anemia right this is therapeutic diet a patient has a kidney problem you have to give restricted protein intake this is therapeutic diet a patient has a celiac flu you tell not to take gluten containing food gluten free food are the therapeutic diet for celiac flu this is the information we are going to learn from this powerpoint I mean rest of the powerpoint so they said the liquid uh, clear liquid diet okay very important for board exam and the problem we miss the question last some time from here you know why we miss it because we have a overconfident we know everything about the diet because it is easy you it is very easy and you neglect it and because of the negligence we miss the score right so first of all clear liquid clear right clear liquid so liquid is two type we use in the hospital the liquid food is two type right one is 
clear liquid another is the full liquid now we are talking about the clear liquid c l e r clear liquid other is called full full liquid right clear liquid it is so clear liquid i said two type here and they said indication first the uh, keep it mind the clear liquid just as an example the clear juice clear gelatin or both is a clear liquid so if anybody has a dehydration this liquid prevent dehydration right or if anybody has a less output less p less output the if we give them clear liquid it would be correct so clear liquid is very transparent definitely and they are liquid at room temperature like example is the water water is a clear liquid then like jello is a clear liquid so any kind of clear liquid like both or soap right this is clear liquid so here what they said the serve the primary function providing the fluids and electrolyte to prevent dehydration prevent dehydration right and initiate the feeding after complete the bowel rest and use initially to feed a malnourished person so if anybody has dehydrated if anybody's output is less or malnourished we give them clear liquid clear liquid diet is used for bowel preparation bowel preparation when we do if anybody go for gi operation surgery surgical operation right we use this one we we, we use prepare the bowel or clear liquid diet is used in gastroemesis gastroemesis emesis means fluid loss vomiting diarrhea gastro from fluid loss from gi gastrointestinal system we give them clear liquid so now nursing consideration always i like to discuss this nursing consideration because this is this we have to know okay so i said that there are two type of liquid one is the clear other is the full full liquid right this is the full liquid so full liquid example is a milk ice cream ice cream is a clear liquid pudding pudding is a clear liquid so here now i am i i want to show you something um about here clear liquid i say the nursing consideration right it is very important because we are going to get our rn license so nursing consideration is here uh, is deficient in the energy or any many nutrient body desire or absorb the clear liquid easily con uh, contribute to little or no residues in the gi and can be unappetizing or as a transition diet clear liquid are intended or short term use only right they are transparent i say transparent and limited caffeine intake so i told you the clear liquid are transparent they are liquid at the room temperature 
right? And we use this clear liquid for GI preparation. We use for transition your time. In special condition, we use it. So any kind, any liquid, um, any kind of clear liquid, what are the uh, liquid at the room temperature? It is important and also the example is the uh, bot or Pepsi call or soap are the example of clear liquid. So now go the continuation of here, clear liquid. So they said the nursing consideration continuation, client may have a salt or sugar and dairy product or food juice with pulp are not a clear liquid. So if simple or fresh or clear juice or juices are clear liquid, but when the clear liquid juices contain anything inside it, it is, they are not clear liquid. They are full liquid that times. Like any, I mean, uh, example of here, monitor uh, the client hydration status by checking input and output and checking their body weight monitoring for edema monitoring for sign of dehydration also each kilogram of weight gain or loss of equal or one fluid so here um, i can show you so, oh, no, 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 I don't see that. No problem, my friend. I so don't mean this, that. Too. This is the picture showing dehydrated boy or patient. So their sun, uh, eye is sunken eye and lips or it is dry, right? Dehydrated. So this is the image showing the dehydrated uh, client. So the person who is dehydrated we have to give them the clear fluid. So they said when we give them clear fluid, we have to checking the amount of fluid intake and amount of fluid output is called input output chart. So input output chart maintenance is very important in case of using clear fluid. Same thing, we have to check their body weight because if anybody increasing the body weight at morning or evening or duration or the gap is too much or increasing every day in the hospital indicate their fluid is accumulate in the body, maybe develop edema, right? Edema monitoring, also, we have to monitor the sign and symptom of dehydration. So, NCLEX board here, we give it here. Each, each kilogram, 2.2 pound of the weight gain or lost is equal one liter of fluid retention, right? 2.2, 2.2 pound. So it is indicate the liquid here. And now go for the next one. This is called the, um, I mean, the full liquid diet. So the liquid, there's a two category. One is a clear, as it's called full liquid, right? So the full liquid diet sometimes we, uh, I said the example of full liquid is a milk or ice cream, pudding, right? Indication may be used as a transition, like a clear uh, diet or diet after clear liquid. We have to give a patient came from surgical operation. 24 hours patient not to take anything by mouth, nothing by mouth. 
when we go to start the giving the food through the mouth we have to give them clear fluid first after clear fluid if patient is no problem with the clear fluid we give them flu full diet food full diet food right i mean fluid contain little bit uh, food particles not absolutely clear juices even right so the consideration nursing consideration a full liquid diet is nutritionally deficient in energy and many fruits that i mean or nutrients a diet include the both clear uh, or opaque liquid food or those are liquid at body temperature so clear or full liquid both are liquid at room temperature food include all clear liquid or items such as clean ice cream or breakfast drinks milk pudding custard soap i mean soap all are full liquid fluid so in case of the board question if they think uh, like milk what kind of food it is they are full liquid not clear liquid also if they said ice cream sometimes make a confusion is it soft food is it blended food right no it is full liquid fluid full liquid ice cream not a soft food not a uh, blended food it is full liquid fluid and also uh, we what we have to know provide nutritional supplements such as those high in the protein as prescribed in the cl uh, clear uh, client on the liquid diet so in board exam if you get anything as prescribed as needed it is answer in the board if anything get as needed right or as prescribed always you have to choose this is the answer in nplex board if you get out of four anything is encouraging and encouraging word is there positive word it is the answer if you are not sure out of four which is the biggest sentence longest sentence is the answer in the nplex board like there are four option one three is almost look like same one is the look like different this is the answer okay there are some technique in nplex board we will see talk one day okay what are i'm talking about in case of any problem sometime we are not know what are the answer then oh my god okay god tell me what are the answer out of four and your mind says something and you put the answer don't go the blind look like this just sometime it is not possible everything you should know so you make a sense and also apply some technique right so some technique sometime is very effective smart way we can make the license so here therapeutic diet continuation is called mechanical or soft food soft soft diet right so soft diet some uh someone if i said when we give them soft diet if someone is difficulty of chewing if someone is difficulty of swallowing chewing or swallowing we give them soft diet soft so any kind of food any kind of food is soft except 
nut or seed. Keep it mind, nut, N-E-U-T, nut, or S-E-E-D, -E seed. Never consider soft food. Never consider soft food, right? So let me read it. Everything is there. Provide food that have been mechanically altered in texture or require minimum chewing. So if anybody has a difficulty of chewing, we give them soft diet. Use the client who have difficulty of chewing, give it to them. Use the client who have a dental problem, dental problem or undergo any kind of surgical operation, they have a dysphagia. Dysphagia means difficulty of swallowing or deglutition, swallow, right? We give them soft diet. So what are the consideration? So degree of Texture modification depends on individual need, including mushroom, ground, or chopped food. Food to be avoided in mechanically altered diet, including nut or dried fruits or dye fruit, raw fruits, vegetables, chocolate candy. So what need for board exam again i want to say when we give them soft food the person who is difficult of swallowing the person who has a dysphagia right also one note we have to know any kind of food that contain the nut or seed they are not considered as a soft food that's it go, go next so some example or indication of soft food same thing difficulty of swing or swallow use for the client with ulceration of mouth or gum or if anybody broken the jaws or dysphagia means difficult of swallow any kind of surgery in the mouth throat, plastic surgery, head, neck area. Give them soft food. What is the consideration? Client with mouth sore should be served the food. Client who have difficult of chewing, encourage the client eat a variety of food. Provide the plenty of water with meal, right? So it should be easy to chewing or swallow. So same continuation of soft food, then low fiber food, soft food here, example swing, drinking fluid through a straw, may be easy than drinking from a cup or glass. A straw may not be allowed for a client with dysphagia. My friend, this is important for board exam this information so all food and seasoning are permitted or food that contain nut okay this is what i was looking for the food that contain the nut or seed which can easily become trapped in the mouth and con can cause discomfort it is very dangerous if you give the seed or nut to the children. It may be a chance to go nose or respiratory tract and blockage there. Cause it's a big accident. Raw veggie fruits or vegetables or fried foods or whole grain should be avoided. Should be avoided right 
also consider the client diagnose disease or illness or how it may affect go next here now go for low fiber low fiber right so all the time we know the high fiber food is good high fiber right we know all the time high fiber high fiber high fiber if patients are constipation give them high fiber but could you remember sometime we need low fiber diet as well low fiber low protein low sodium low purine very important so low fiber diet when we need high fiber food we know every time when need so don't miss it if board acts low fiber so when we need the low fiber diet so supply the food that are least likely to form obstruction when intestine tract is narrowing by five inflammation or use the inflammatory bowel disease so in case of inflammatory bowel disease so in a short in a short i said when you go in med surge with other doc i mean faculty they will maybe explain better or uh, because this is a med surge question i said if anybody have bowel inflammatory bowel disease inflammatory bowel they have a too much defecation too much poo right maybe four times they go if it's four time definitely uh, is not good so in case of too much it is hyper mobility of gi hyper mobility so partial obstruction of intestinal tract gastroenteritis means gastropathy gi problem diarrhea right if already have a diarrhea don't give too much high fiber food low fiber food is good for them food that are low or res low in residue include the bread cooked cereal cooked potato right food to limit to avoid a raw fruits also or dairy product should be limited to when you serving a day so inflammatory bowel or gastropathy gastroenteritis diarrhea we have to give them low fiber containing diet other terminology of low fiber typing diet is called low residual diet low residual diet don't miss this and now high fiber i know everybody is know very well about this one high fiber easy right make it easy high fiber diet we give to prevent constipation any patient on bed rest keep it mind my friend make it easy make it important for nclex board any patient has to lie down for a long time or rest on bed for a long time they need high fiber food they also need mobilization Ex right some of the example of high fiber food are whole grain fruits vegetables right or some kind of raw food juice so i said the high fiber food prevent constipation also any patient if they have to lie down for a more than two or three days like a patient is 
end uh, terminal time or if the patient is immobilized because of a severe accident on the feet. So if the patient on the bed rest, we give them high fiber food. Same time, if possible, we tell them to mobilize. When they mobilize, their GI move, right? And help the, to stop the constipation. So here, indication they said, use the client with constipation, irritable bowel syndrome irritable bowel syndrome. When the primary symptom is alternating constipation and diarrhea or asymptomatic diverticular disease. So all of the disease, it is GI related. So if any patient has a diverticulitis, it is, um, I can show you. A, so, in case of diverticulitis, if you give them low fiber diet or high protein or a high carbohydrate, the food is go through the sac diverti here. And the food is go there and not come back in the mainstream and causes obstruction. But if the patient has a diverticulitis is like this, if we give them high fiber food, the food has a less chance go inside and stuck, fall in stuck and causes the complication. So this is diverticular disease. So here again, I said, if any patient diverticulitis, we should give them high fiber food. But again, I say NCLEX good, do not give you pain. They ask, very superficial question. And we are not going to be the master or PhD degree here. Okay, very superficial. So nursing consideration provide 20 to 35 gram of dietary fiber daily. And added the volume and weight to be the stool or speed up the movement of our intestine. So something is, I'm just sharing with you, my friend. So constipation, when anybody has a constipation, what happening? The GI, GIT, you know what is GIT? I mean, gastrointestinal tract. I'm not going to open the picture right now. I say the GIT does not move or mortality is less. If the GIT is mortality is less, the GIT does not produce enough stool or poo. So what we have to do, we tell them to take enough fiber containing foods, tell them to take enough water, tell them to do some exercise. When they exercise, their body is moving. When body move, GIT also move. Right, we has to tell them. So consist the fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Increase the fiber gradually and provide adequate fluid and reduce possible uh, undesirable side effect. So now go for here, uh, some cardiac diet, some cardiac diet, right? So cardiac diet, if I make it easy for you, if I tell you, what does it mean, cardiac diet? Cardiac diet means you have to give less fat. You have to give low sodium containing diet. Low sodium containing diet or low carb fat diet is friendly for heart. So, Cardiac diet indicate for atherosclerosis, atherosclerosis, diabetes mellitus, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, myocardial infarction, nephrotic syndrome, and kidney failure. 
So again, I'm talking about this is the classes not to go through the disease right now. If I go through, I do not finish the PowerPoint, okay? But it is very interesting and I'm very crazy to explain them, but not today. If I get any opportunity with you, I will explain for NCLEX board related. So I said, if you give them cardiac friendly food, you can prevent atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis means thickness, the wall of artery, artery. Diabetes, increase the sugar. Hyperlipidemia, increase the bad cholesterol in the body, like HDL. HDL, low density lipoprotein, L for LD, HDL, LDL, sorry, LDL is low, HDL is high. So hypertension, most common problem in the United States. Myocardial infarction, it is not infection, my friend, infarction. Blood supply is go less, ischemic change occur in the heart, and heart tissue die, heart failure develop. Nephrotic syndrome. So the kidney protein does not make a balance and kidney failure. So if anybody has to take the cardiac friendly diet, like low fat, low sodium, this is help them to prevent the heart problem, means hypertension or chronic heart failure. One of the example of cardiac diet is a low sodium diet. Low sodium diet, right, means we do not take canned food. Any preservative food like meat, they contain too much sodium. Low sodium, fluid restriction, right? Both are cardiac friendly food. So reduce the risk of heart disease, dietary approach to stop hypertension, one. So this is the meaning Dietary approach to stop hypertension, shortly called DASS diet, recommended to prevent and control of hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, and obesity. Diet, I mean, DASS dash diet include fruits, vegetables, grains, low fat diet, and food. My friend, I do not need to go through every word because you are smart enough to read at home. Nursing consideration restricted total amount of fat, including saturated trans fat, polysaturated fat, or mono unsaturated fat, cholesterol, or sodium. But I, what I'm saying about this already, I said it, it is more than enough. So now go the fat uh, restricted diet, fat restricted. So fat restricted means used to reduce the symptom of abdominal pain, steatoria. Steatoria means the stool or poo contain fat because fat does not digestion well. Soft like stool, steatoria. Flatulence, I believe you know what is flatulence. I'm not going right now. Diarrhea associated with high intake of dietary fat also decrease the nutrient losses used for the client with malabsorption disorder or pancreatitis, the inflammation of pancreas, pancreatitis, gallbladder disease, my mean stone formation in the gallbladder, or gastroesophageal reflex. Gastro means stomach, 
esophagus means before the stomach portion called esophagus food is go back down to us from stomach to esophagus to us the mouth food should be go down if food going go back direction is called reflex gastroesophageal what i'm eating why i'm what i ate after humid food is go back direction to come in my mouth very bad right so in that medical condition we give them fat restricted diet fat restricted diet fat restricted what are the uh, some information here client with male absorption right or vitamin or mineral deficiency may occur in the client with diarrhea or steatoria the person you know the person who has a diarrhea after two to two or three times after the poo or defecation they will feel sick why they feel sick because during their defecation they lose electrolyte because of electrolyte low or imbalance the patient feel sick weak right so here a fecal uh, fat test may be prescribed and indicate fat male absorption and here high calorie high protein this is the question for nflex board okay this is come from nflex like it too much okay this is some unknown reason so high protein high high calorie so high protein high calorie when we have to give them my friend if any keep it mind and flex board asks the question high protein we have to give if elderly patient or any patient is born right cancer patient hiv human immunodeficiency virus infection acquired immunodeficiency so hiv aids patient chronic obstructive pulmonary disease copd respiratory failure so we have to know this one we have to know so when we have to give high protein high calorie diet and clicks ask the question from here this red mark so food are red meat food contain fish beans they are high protein food high calories encourage the nutrient dense high calorie high protein food such as milk milk product peanut butter nut seed beef chicken fish pork egg are high protein so today don't eat too much this contain food although it is good right but too good is not good so encourage the snacks between the meal such as the milkshake or instant breakfast or nutrient supplements so sometimes patient need to uh, conserve their energy or we can provide some food in between to big meal calorie assist the determine the client total nutritional intake and can identify any kind of deficit or excess so what amount patient are taking and what amount they are outputting they always have to be the balance carbohydrate consistent diet carbohydrate consistent so you know carbohydrate is contain the sugar 
we eat rice and rice break down through the metabolism and can produce the sugar sugar is the last molecule produced from carbohydrate so i said if anybody has a diabetic we have to give them restricted carbohydrate hypoglycemia give them carbohydrate diabetic patient give them less carbohydrate hyperglycemia less carbohydrate and obesity obesity so indication we restricted so nursing consideration here so anybody has a i mean the a carbohydrate consistent diet focus meaning a consistent amount of carbohydrate intake each day or each meal also as called carbs containing meals right so here uh, i said the carbohydrate consistent diet so maybe if your patient like a diabetic so sugar free sugar free diet they need sugar free or less carbohydrate containing food but on the other hand if the patient who hypoglycemia they have a less sugar so give them more sugar like a candy hyperglycemia also restricted and if anybody is obese obesity obesity is not only for the take excess amount of fat obesity can cause also if anybody take excess amount of carbohydrate then sodium restricted diet sodium restricted diet on the other hand this is heart friendly food so indication hypertension heart failure kidney disease cardiac disease and liver disease so if anybody have hypertension or renal disease or heart failure we give them less sodium content food right so this said any individualized can include 4 gram of sodium daily 4 gram of sodium daily curry is the intake of fresh rather than processed food because processed food or canned food contain too much canned food frozen food smoked food box food contain too much sodium and contain medication or contain significant amount of sodium or certain medication sorry certain medication can contain significant sodium so as a rn when you work in hospital we have to know what food can alter the sodium level because sodium indirectly alter the potassium level as well and sodium and potassium indirectly uh, alter the calcium level and finally imbalance occur all of the electrolyte so protein restricted diet everybody know that hope so so protein restricted restricted not protein rich protein rich food will give them elderly or born or old patient but protein restricted food we give them kidney failure patient this is the information for board exam protein restricted means less protein who renal disease patient less protein and stays liver problem if anybody cirrhosis of liver carcinoma of the liver right we give them less less uh, protein 
So also the nutrient status critically ill client with protein losing condition should have their protein need accessed by eliminating the protein also equivalent of the nutrition appearance. So what are the other nursing consideration about the protein, low or protein? So provide enough protein to maintain nutritional status or less protein allow the more important it become that all protein is the diet B of a high biological balance. Adequate total energy intake from the food is a critical for client or protein restricted diet. So if a patient need a protein restriction, it is better the person who is deal with the nutrition, they can give a diet chat, right? Because we have to have make a balance calorie balance when patient need it. So protein restricted diet continuations, especially low protein product such as pasta. So my friend, this is important for board exam. Super duper important. Simply say, which one you, you allow for protein, low protein diet? A patient came to you for renal failure. Which food is allowed for the patient? I got the question like this. So like pasta or pasta, bread, cookies, right? And also some gelatin made with the wheat straight and starch also improve the energy intake. Carbohydrate is powdered form or liquid from form can also provide additional energy. So if anybody severely damaged the kidney or liver, we give them alternative food. Vegetables and fruits contain some protein. And for low protein diet, this food must be calculated. Food from the milk, meat, bread, or starch group are limited for protein restricted diet. Now go another most important for NCLEX, uh, gluten free diet, gluten free, right? So the gluten free food or diet, we give them the treatment of celiac disease. It is very important for NCLEX board. If anybody has a celiac disease, what kind of food is restricted? Gluten-free. Gluten is a sensitive for the client and, need, and needing for protein fraction gluten eliminate from the diet, right? So fluid restriction may be prescribed for the client with hypo, Natremia, hyponatremia. So I said the NCLEX board. NCLEX board asks a question celiac disease. The celiac disease patient must restricted gluten, must restricted gluten for gluten free diet. So what are the example of gluten-free diet? Example is the barley, ray, oat, or wheat. Wheat, they are restricted, right? So like uh, here I said, the barley or ray, oat, or wheat, are the gluten free? We have to know for NCLEX vote. And now go for here the renal renal diet. What are the re friendly renal diet? Indic first of all, renal diet indication. A renal diet. So acute kidney injuries or chronic kidney disease those clients require 
hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis. So again, I've said this is the classes for fundamental and nutrition studies, our chapter. I'm not going through everything what is meaning of hemodialysis or peritoneal. But keep in mind, if anybody's kidney is not working, we have to eliminate the waste product from the body. This technique is called hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis. Hemodialysis, we use a device in the outside. Peritoneal dialysis, we use some saline solution, put it and connect it to the peritoneal cavity in the abdomen. But both cases help to eliminate the waste product from the body. So renal diet, I said, or you know, the low protein, low sodium is a food for renal patient, right? So renal diet must be contain low sodium, low protein. Low protein means avoid red meat, avoid organ meat. Or if I say low protein food for the renal patient, focus the fresh fruits and vegetables. Right? So renal diet means low sodium diet. So for the patient who is kidney failure, we give them low protein. Low protein means avoid red meat, avoid organ meat, or on the other hand, give them low protein content food means give them fruits, vegetables more, or low sodium, means low sodium diet, means no canned food or no food preserved in a solution, any preserved food, any preserved meat, low sodium, low rest, uh, rest fluid restriction are food for renal disease. That's it. I'm just going to read it because if I get confusion, Control amount of protein, sodium, phosphorus, or calcium, potassium, fluid may be prescribed. May also require modification of the amount of fiber, cholesterol, or fat. Hmm? And most clients who are receiving dialysis need to restrict fluid. Initial data collection. So data. So this data is not IT or computer data. This is the sign and symptom from the patient. We are healthcare provider. This data is a little bit different. It is the sign and symptom of my patient. Include the identifying any kind of allergies of food or medication, we have to note, we have to keep in documentation. Potassium modifying diet, potassium modifying. So basic, keep it mind, make it easy. So if anybody has a problem or restricted to potassium, we have to give them low potassium diet, right? So low potassium diet is in, indicate for hyperkalemia. So if anybody has a hyperkalemia, like your patient taking the potassium sparing diuretics for a long time, like spironolactum, they have a chance to develop hyperkalemia. So give them low protein diet. If your patient has taking the diuretics or th 
hyzide diuretics like prusamide and lasix they have a chance to develop hypokalemia hypokalemia so you have to give them high protein diet very easy right so high protein diet for hypokalemia hypokalemia means when potassium level is low give them more potassium food right so basic important here in uh, potassium wasting diuretics some antibiotics mineralocorticoid glucocorticoid causes the potassium loss from the body so they need high potassium food so also primary or secondary hyperaldosteronism this is the problem in the kidney and patient uh, abnormal in absorption right also cushing syndrome or hyper explanation has a problem so here causes the so we have a break uh, for 15 minutes my friend break time yeah so i we said the potassium wasting diuretics so some of the medication can cause lose from the potassium and when potassium is expelled out from the body and it is called hypokalemia so you need high potassium rich diet another disease called cushing syndrome so when i talk to my student about the um, medsats i said cushing you see a c u u means everything is up the most of the sign and symptom is going up in the cushing syndrome except potassium so cushing syndrome patient develop hypokalemia so we have to give them high protein diet so hypercalcemia what are the medical condition when hypercalemia is most common one of the ex example is called edison disease then angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor so this is the pharmacology right pharmacological drugs so uh, in the in i said the angiotensin converting or antihypertensive medication antihypertensive medication i said can cause the hyperkalemia means potassium accumulate in the body so if your body too much potassium definitely you have to avoid the high protein diet or give them the food what is contain less amount protein so sorry less amount potassium same right so potassium retaining diuretics like spironolactone or chronic hyperkalemia so when we go through the powerpoint just one or two point we have to make note for nclex board the another is nursing consideration about the potassium food that are low in the potassium including what are the food contain low potassium one is called i mean green beans cabbage lettuce lettuce peppers grabs blueberries cooked summer squash right or fresh pineapples raspberries all kind of berries pineapples peppers lettuce cabbage 
all contain low potassium if possible try to remember for example okay and here uh, the next one the rich calcium diet rich calcium so what medical condition patient need to take the food what is contained high calcium rich calcium diet calcium is needed during bone growth or grow, growth in adolescence to prevent osteoporosis so osteoporosis is a disease where bones loss or eroded erosion weaker bones because of lack of potassium or calcium so if anybody has a osteoporosis like osteoporosis is more common in the female because of blood loss right or also the developing country low uh, rich food so they has to take the calcium uh, tablet because calcium tablet protect osteoporosis right osteoporosis and also the facilitated vascular contraction and vasodilation or muscle contraction nerve transmission so sometimes and clicks would ask what are the function of calcium function of the calcium they help to muscle contraction they has a uh, role for nerve transmission nerve transmission neurotransmitter is transmit the impulses calcium can help us so primary diet source of calcium are dairy product or dairy product so everybody know this milk or milk product are the good source of calcium client with lactose intolerance need to incorporate so some of the baby especially african american they have a lactose intolerance the baby they do not digest the milk or milk product if anybody di does not digest milk or milk product the deficiency of calcium is more common with them so you have to tell them to take the calcium supplement right and now go for the other most important for nclex board this is called low purine diet and high iron diet most it's super duper important for board exam right first of all low purine diet low purine diet indicate anybody is a gout kidney stone or elevated uric acid level so if anybody's uric acid level is increased and patient develop the sign or symptom of the disease this is gout so gout patient increase the uric acid level so if anybody has a gout or kidney problem we have to tell them to take low purine diet low purine diet so low purine diet contain the food or gout friendly diet so low purine diet means gout friendly diet means if anybody has a gout they has to take low purine diet so low purine diet is a gout friendly diet same thing so like 
example is a white bread, also the pasta or noodles. This is uh, low purine content food. Even the dairy product like milk or some cheese or yogurt. This is low purine diet. Some vegetables, some fruits, some, I mean, coffee, also low purine diet, right? So keep in mind that what I said for NCLEX board, low purine diet we need for the patient who has a gout. So low purine diet have to avoid. So if anybody has, has a gout, has a kidney stone, they have to avoid the food like organ meat, kidney, liver, alcohol beverages. Alcohol beverages or organ meat, they contain too much purine or seafood, seafood, sardine, right? Or cod fish liver. They contain bacon, turkey. They contain a huge amount of purine. So the patient who is a gout, they are not okay to take the food contain the purine. I told you like organ meat or alcohol beverages, some fish like seafood, like shellfish, sardine, or cod fish, meat, bacon, turkey, bell, they contain high purine. Next is iron, high iron diet, iron diet. So iron diet, we give them, so, high iron diet, like iron deficiency anemia. If anybody has an iron deficiency anemia, we have to give iron containing food. So what is the nursing consideration we have to know for iron diet? High iron diet replaces an iron deficiency, and also diet include organ meat but organ meat contain too much purine right so meat egg yolk whole um, wheat product dark green vegetables today from evolved question the student can answer me dark green vegetables also inform the client that um, intake vitamin c so vitamin c help to absorption the iron right need to know for NCLEX board so now some kind of uh, people can take the vegetable it's called vegetarian vegetarian so vegetarian has a chance of deficiency of some kind of protein right so they has to take some um, extra protein from some extra source so the good source of protein who is non animal protein or vegetarian soybeans soy milk right so this is the source of good protein but plants origin non animal protein and also here uh, like uh, some of the ovo uh, vegetarians the only animal food that have ovo vegetarians consume are eggs which are the excellent source of complete protein so egg are the food they had 100% absorbable, right? So this is the 
very good source of the protein. So also there's some basic information we have to know. So I believe if you read, you can understand very easy. I'm just going to focus from body mass index. What is body mass index? And what are the normal range of body mass index? We should know about the board. Body mass index or shortly called BMI. Body mass index can be calculated by dividing the client weight in kilogram. So weight in kilogram. So in NFLEX board, if you give a calculation, like they give a patient, a patient body weight is 32 pound or 170 pound. So this pound, we have to convert it to kilogram, right? So because when we need to count down to the BMI, so always patient or client body weight should be measured in kilogram. So also by height in meter. So if height mentioning by centimeter, we have to, has to convert to meter, also meter square. For example, the client whose body weighs 75 kg or 165 pound, 165 pound converted to kg. So how converted? 165 divided by 2.2, right? Then it's converted to kg because one kg equal to 2.2 pound. So NCLEX board, if you give them the figure, but unit is pound, we have to convert to kilogram. And same if the patient mentioning the body height, but height must be one kg one equals what? Oh, I said one kg equal to 2.2 pound. 2.2 pound, yeah. And also height is 1.8 meter. So if we have to count down the BMI, the total body weight in kilo, kilogram divided by like 75 kg divided by total height. And it would be by square also, square. So then we can calculate the body mass index. So body mass index is the indicator to identify anybody is the overweight or underweight or obesity. I can show you a picture because it is important sometime and clicks board asks it. Let me and click board exam. So already you know what is body mass index. Body mass index is the shortly called BMI. So if anybody, uh, uh, can you see the picture? Let me uh, share one yeah. more time then. Okay, okay. So if anybody is underweight, or overweight or obesity, we can find out by BMI. BMI or body mass index. If, uh, first of all, we have to know what are the normal BMI range. Normal BMI is 18.5 to 24.9. If you, of if my BMI, in between this range means we are normal. We are in normal. So if the BMI is less than 18.5, indicate they are underweight. But if anybody's BMI is less than 25, but less than 29.9, they are overweight. 
And if anybody is more than 30, they are obese or obesity. So we do not need to know all of them, but we have to know if the BMI is more than 30 means obesity. If anybody's BMI is more than 30, they have a chance of develop atherosclerosis, they have a chance of develop hypertension, they have a chance of develop heart failure, they have a chance of develop stroke, right? So they have to reduce their BMI in between 18, point, 18 to 24.9. But when we will tell overweight, when BMI is 25 to 29.9, it is indicate they have to be concerned about their body weight. Okay, they have to start some exercise. They have to start some um, uh, dietary habit control. So this is the normal range of BMI we have to know for NCLEX board exam. And let me finish the PowerPoint. We are very close to finish also. So now here, so uh, the enteral nutrition, right? Enteral nutrition, they said, the provide the liquefied food in the GI tract via the tube. So sometimes the some of the patient are uh, do not possible to take the food by mouth. This time we have to give them some, um, I mean, uh, rice stew for the feeding, right? Rice stew for the feeding. This is called the enteral nutrition. Right. So if a patient has a problem to take the food orally, we have to give them to take the, we should give them the food by a channel, by a uh, TPN or central line or total parental nutrition, total parental nutrition. This is called enteral nutrition. Right. So description provide the liquefied food to the GI tract, indicate if the GI tract is not functioning or if the client with a swallow or problem or if the patient has a burn, major trauma or organ failure, we give them the enteral nutrition. One of the enteral nutrition is called total parental nutrition. So I can show you a picture so you can easily understand. It's called central line. Central line, uh, we can say central line nutrition like this uh, here central line for nutrition here and like this so if you see this picture so here so sometimes if patient has any difficulties of git or difficulty of swallowing the food or patient is too weak to take the food or if the patient is unconscious we give them the saline food saline right so if we give them the nutrition through the saline solution this is called enteral nutrition or more accurately, total parental nutrition, right? Total 
parental nutrition like this picture saline solution total parental nutrition tpn and this is the pump and the saline solution connected through this catheter and catheter connected to the subclavian vein and this is called central channel central channel so let me go through again the powerpoint what they wrote so total liquid okay it is done and this said if anybody has non-functioning gi rod so what are the consideration if anybody has a total parental nutrition the client with lactose intolerance need to be placed to lactose free formula so if anybody has a lactose intolerance and during the choosing the uh, flu i mean liquid we should choose lactose free formula right and also keep it mind when we give them the total parental nutrition we has to we has to uh, keep in mind the complication related or arise from total parental nutrition so sometimes nclex board asks the question from this i'm just going through so total parental nutrition i said uh, already you saw the picture here so total parental nutrition we give them we give them in the vein so ag again if i open the picture this is the saline solution passing through the vein they are giving through the vein so this is artery in the body and in the vein so we give them the vein like subclavian vein or superior vena cable vein so now go back again in the powerpoint so here i said the total parental nutrition mostly mixed with dextose dextose is a saline solution dextose contain a good amount of sugar right so we are right now talking to the parental nutrition total parental nutrition so i said total parental nutrition we have to give through the vein like subclavian vein and total parental nutrition most of the or mostly make through the dextose saline solution dextose dextose contain a good amount of sugar so if you go to our school in miami garden in our school in uh, simulation lab we have a two or three uh, total parental nutrition stand you should see, see or when i go for the clinical uh, uh, sh uh, for the clinical in our simulation lab i will show you okay everything we have up there in simulation lab so it would be easy to convey the message to your brain when we go physically up there so i said sometime board asks in case of total parental nutrition what are the nutrient going through what are the what are the nutrient going through the body through the vein right so when we have to give them total parental nutrition when gi or gastrointestinal system not working well and what laboratory test we have to do before and after total parental nutrition we have to check 
blood glucose level blood glucose level right because if you give the total parental nutrition like dextose the chance of develop hyperglycemia because the saline dextose contain sugar and sugar causes hyperglycemia definitely time will come and we have to stop the total parental nutrition it is another important note we have to know as rn when we have to remove the total parental nutrition for the patient we have to check again blood sugar why because chance of develop hypoglycemia when you give the total parental nutrition and dextrose give we have to check blood sugar because of hyperglycemia when you stop the total parental nutrition if patient is okay we have to again check and because patient has developed to just hypoglycemia one is hyperglycemia other is the hypoglycemia if and clicks boots asks how often does the nurse can change this set total parental nutrition set usually every day and also uh, every day or we has to check the blood sugar level if it is high no chance of uh, okay another thing is if, if we has to check the parental nutrition and you check the high blood glucose level it turns bacteria develop because bacteria like the sugar like the sugar so we have to change the materials so let me here okay so i'm going to talk about the total parental nutrition right so this is the saline solution and saline solution contain the electrolyte and also they contain the dextose dextose is a sugar right dextose is a sugar i said so here the total parental nutrition usually we give through the vein and this vein is called subclavian vein subclavian vein right so what i wanted to share with you is i said the total parental nutrition we give the patient when they are git not functioning or if patient go any kind of major surgical operation we could give them parental nutrition right so who or the client who's git not functioning properly we give them total parental nutrition so before to give the total parental nutrition we have to check blood glucose level even after starting the total parental nutrition we have to regularly monitor blood sugar level because the fluid or saline we give them this is a dextrose dextrose a contained a good amount of sugar so patient chance to develop hyperglycemia always keep it mind if we give them total parental nutrition 
how often does the nurse can change the tubing? Answer every day. Or it is depends upon checking the blood sugar because dextrose contain a good source of sugar and the good source of sugar is a chance to develop the bacteria. So we have to check or change the tubing every day. So always keep it mind. So what electrolyte can, uh, I, we said the total parental nutrition also important for electrolyte. And also we have to check the electrolyte balance like sodium, potassium, and sodium, potassium, calcium. So what electrolyte imbalance can total parental nutrition causes? So what electrolyte imbalance can cause? Maybe they can cause hyperkalemia or hypermagnesemia or hyperphosphatemia. So what are the emergency substitute of total parental nutrition? Total parental nutrition substitute is the dextose, 10%, right? When we has to, uh, when time come, we has to stop the total parental nutrition always keep it mind we gradually should stop the total parental gradually not suddenly not suddenly right and also keep it mind if any patient has to take the total parental nutrition the risk risk of develop ER embolism or fluid overload or infection and can chance of develop hyperglycemia because patient has to open a channel like this when you open a channel like this this is has a chance of infection or we give them the fluid this is fluid chance to develop fluid overload or open the channel like this as a chance to develop fluid uh, ER embolism, right? And also I told the fluid content, the dextrose chance to develop the hyperglycemia, right? Also think about one, clinical scenario if a patient sorry if suddenly the this bag is finished right and the rn is waiting to continue the next bag but the bag is not there in that point of view we do not stop we have to continue this one through a any other kind of uh, saline solution, like 10% dextrose solution, we has to continue, right? So this is the very important or very basic information. We has to talk about the total parental nutrition. Mm -hmm. And here in this, they so talk about the what are the total parental nutrition indication, means medical condition when we need, right? And next page talk about the parental nutrition, total uh, parental nutrition here, and also the delivery of hyper tonic solution so 
the dextrose solution, this is the hypertonic solution, into the peripheral vein can cause, sometimes causes the sclerosis or flavitis or swelling. So like this, when you put it here, the channel, the patient has a chance to develop inflammation the vein and this is called flavitis this is called flavitis so flavitis or the sclerosis this structure should be sclerosed the chance of sclerosis or swelling so monitor closely to see if any kind of complication developed right so this is very important for nplex board and up to this this is the powerpoint we should know